I'm going to go ahead and show you the process I use for painting the belly dancer. Here you will see the reference colors I used and on the next page you will see the colors I laid out on my palette and how I got the flesh tones. The first step I did is uh, with turpentine I thinned out maple yellow's hue along with the oxazine purple. I laid that dry for 48 hours then I went ahead and I made a grid out of the original picture uh, one inch by one inch and I transferred that grid over to the canvas at an equal space three inch by three inch you have to make sure that you use the correct size you don't want to have a one inch by one inch grid and you can see the grid right there on the original and then try to transfer it using two by three inches your picture is going to come out wrong and it's going to come out wide and you just have to make sure it's even so if you use two inch by two inch it's got to be four inch by four inch or six inch by six inch it just has to be even now I also when I drew the reference onto the canvas I included the highlights and the shadows and that's just for me you don't have to go into detail but I feel that it helps out quite a bit the first step I did also is I went ahead and for the underpainting I used liquid original that'll give you the um, almost like a watercolor effect and that's just for your reference now the first color I used on her hair was cadmium yellow and I thinned it out so it's the more liquid original the more paint thinner you use the lighter the color is going to be the less the darker so I went ahead and put that in her hair and then for the dark areas on her hair I went ahead and I used cadmium red now for the shirt I used the ultramarine blue and for the other side where it's a little bit lighter where the lights hitting her I went ahead and you I thinned it out and I went ahead and put some deep rose to give me that violet color and as you can see right above is deep rose along with cadmium yellow because it's got some little golden beads going around the breast right and then one important step when you're first doing the underpainting is you have to thin um, I'm sorry, you have to remove all the hard edges so that's why I'm drying my brush real well some people use an extra brush and I'm going over and removing all the hard edges and then you can also create highlights that way the harder you scrub the more paint you remove and the better your highlight is as you can see when I was doing the fold on the sleeve if you want to create a um, realistic 3d looking fold you gotta make sure you know where all the shadows of the folds fall so if you get your shadows for the folds it's gonna give you a realistic look so as you can see I'm going in there I'm applying the paint and then I remove some of the paint by scrubbing harder with a clean brush and I'm going over to the next side and I'm going to do the same thing I did on the first side once again using the ultramarine blue with some deep rose and on this side it's a little bit darker because that's where the shade is coming from and as I mentioned earlier, it's I'm going to go back with the clean brush. You'll see me doing this throughout the whole painting. Is I'm going to remove the hard edges, and all I'm doing is just scrubbing it. You know. A trick I learned is when I was doing the folds. Well, here you'll see me the harder I scrub in with the clean brush the more paint I take out now with the folds what I noticed is when I was creating the shadows first with the folds and then I went and I 
evened out the paint by removing all the hard edges when I went back with the liquid original with the blue on there it would create a highlight so I like that effect so that was an easy way for me to create the highlight on the fold where the light was hitting it I'm doing the scarf and with the scarf I added more deep rows to the ultramarine blue see my two brushes right there I'm also going to do the necklace and it's a golden beaded necklace and that is going to have cadmium yellow and then she has turqu um, I guess a turquoise beaded necklace This painting had a lot of ultramarine blue and deep rose violet colors. The first thing I'm doing here with the rose on her hair, it looks like some kind of flower on her hair, is I did the light version and then I went back with a dark color and then with my clean brush I removed the hard edges and also created more highlights by scrubbing a little bit harder. I'm doing the glove and the glove is once again ultramarine blue with black. I'm making the folds of the garment. I try not to get too much in the way of the camera, but apparently I was right on in the way. You'll get a good look on the next glove as to what I did. Right now what I'm doing, I'm just blending the paint on there. You can see that. And then I'm also going to, I'm removing the hard edges. And then you'll see me scrubbing a little bit where the highlight's supposed to be. And the light's hitting the glove right there see now I'm adding more highlights by scrubbing harder you will get a good look on this one you'll get a better look there same color um, applying the folds, the shadows on the folds. I'm blending the color and then I'm going back and with a little bit of liquid original and the original color it's going to give me that great highlight that I need I'm just going to go over it and it removes some of the paint giving you an awesome looking fold highlight See there it is. I'm going back with the liquid original and it's removing some of the paint giving you a highlighted fold. 